Hello everyone and welcome to C++ Scientific Computing and Linear Algebra Tutorial. In this tutorial we explain how to solve linear systems of equations in C++ by using the Eigenmatrix library. The Eigenmatrix library is a powerful and easy to use library for matrix computations, linear algebra, matrix decompositions, eigenvalue computations, etc. In particular, this is the code that we will explain in this video tutorial. We will define a random matrix and then we will explain several methods for solving a linear system of equations involving this matrix. Finally, we will explain how to compute the solution errors. Besides this, we will explain how to set up the VS Code editor and the C++ compiler such that you can easily use the Eigen C++ matrix library. But before I start with explanations, I would like to mention the following. It took me a significant amount of time, energy and planning to create this completely free video tutorial, as well as more than 350 free video tutorials that you can find on my YouTube channel. And consequently, I kindly ask you to press the like and subscribe buttons. Also, please feel free to leave any comment or question you might have in the comment section below this video tutorial. Also, before I start with explanations, I would like to mention the following. The code developed and explained in this video tutorial is freely available on my GitHub page. A link to the GitHub page is given in the description below this video tutorial. Okay, let's start. In this video tutorial, I'm using the VS Code editor to compile the C++ code. If you're not familiar with C++ code compilation and execution, don't worry, I created a separate video tutorial that explains how to install the VS Code editor and how to install and use the Microsoft Visual Studio C++ compiler in VS Code editor. Also, I created a separate tutorial that explains how to install the Eigen Matrix library in the VS Code editor. Links to these video tutorials are given in the description below this video tutorial. From now on, until the end of this video tutorial, I will assume that you installed the VS Code Editor and the Microsoft Visual Studio C++ compiler. Under these assumptions, if you click over here and if you type developer, you will see developer command prompt. Open it. Okay. Let us create our source file somewhere. That is, let us start the VS Code Editor. Over here, I will go to my codes folder and I will create a new folder called test system. Then I will go to that folder and over here, I will execute the VS Code editor. You just type code and dot. Okay, here is the Visual Studio Code editor. The first step is to properly set up the VS Code editor and the compiler such that the Eigen Matrix library can be properly included and compiled. The best way to do that is to create an empty and minimal C++ code file. Let's do that. We will click over here, then we will click on New File. We will call the file test system onecpp and we will create the file. Here it is. Let's create a minimal C++ file. We will include input output stream. Then over here, we will be using namespace std. Then here's our main function. It will be an empty function for the time being, and we will return zero. Next, let's try to compile or build this file. To do that, we will click over here, and from this list, we need to select the compiler. I will be using cl.executable, and this is the Microsoft Visual Studio compiler. Here it is. Let's see the output. Okay, here's the output. Nothing happens. Now, if you click over here, you will notice that VS Code Editor over here created a new folder, .vs Code. Open that folder and open this file. This file called tasks.json sets the main parameters of our compiler. 
And over here, we need to tell to our compiler where is our eigenmatrix library. To do that, we need to locate the eigenmatrix library on our computer. In my case, the eigenmatrix library is in this toolbox folder, and here it is. Now, I will simply copy this path, and I will paste this path. However, first add comma in this row, then start a new line, and over here, you need to modify a few things. First of all, you need to change this, And over here, you need to add the dash include. Okay, so this is the path to our Eigen C++ matrix library. And over here, we told to our compiler, hey, the library is located over here. Perfect. However, we need to do another modification. We need to create and edit another file. To do that, press Control, hold Control, press Shift, hold Shift, and press P then you will see this menu. Click over here and see what happened over here. A new file is created. Click on this file and over here you need to specify the path. Go back to JSON file and copy this part. Don't copy dash i. Go over here, comma, new row, then in this row Type this, and that's it. Press save. Okay, perfect. The next step is to add proper includes to our source file. That is, we need to modify this file and we need to add the proper header files. First, we need to include our eigendance library. Here it is. The header file eigendance is actually used to manipulate dense matrices in eigenmatrix library. However, that's not the whole story. Over here, we need to type using namespace eigen. Okay. Let us do a simple test. Over here, I will create a simple matrix by using the eigen matrix library. I will type matrix x d and I will specify the name test1. Let's try to compile this code and let's see the output. Okay, perfect. No errors. Consequently, we were able to successfully install the eigenmatrix library. Okay, let's start. First, we need to define our linear system of equations. The linear system will look like this. A times x is equal to y. Over here, for simplicity in this video tutorial, I will assume that A is a square matrix. Here we have vector x, and this is our right-hand side, vector y. Here is the C++ code for defining a simple linear system. Over here, I'm creating a random matrix. Matrix x d is type definition for this. This is a matrix of doubles with dynamic size. Dynamic dynamic means that rows and columns are determined at the compile time. Here is the matrix. Then over here I call the function set random and I specify the number of rows and columns. That is I created a random matrix with dimensions of 5 times 5. And over here, I will simply print the generated matrix. Here is my true solution. That is, this is my vector x. Again, let us write our system. A is the random matrix defined over here. x is the true solution. Here it is. And over here, I define the right-hand side. What do I do? I simply multiply A by X to define the right-hand side. That is the vector Y. Perfect. We have everything. We have a true solution. 
we have the matrix A, that is completely random matrix, and we have the right hand side Y. This vector X, that is the true solution, we'll use to, to test the solution process, that is to test the accuracy of our solver. Let's see how to solve this system. First of all, I need to define a vector that will store the solution. The vector is called solution vector. Then, I need to define a vector that will track the error. That is the difference between the true solution and the computed solution. Over here, I'm using the QR decomposition with column pivoting. I create this object then I specify the random matrix, that is, I specify the system matrix A. And over here I solve the system. The solution vector will be simply B system.solve. And I specify the right hand side. And that's it. And finally I print the solution. Let's compile and build this code and let's see the output. Here it is. Here is our random matrix A, 5 by 5 random matrix, and here is the computed solution. Now if you compare this computed solution with the true solution, you will see perfect match. And later on we will numerically quantify the error, you will see that the error is actually at the level of numerical precision. Let us summarize this first approach once more. First, we created the object of the class column pivot householder QR. The name of the object is system. We specify the random matrix, that is, we pass the random matrix to the constructor of this class. Over here, we call the function solve and we specify the right hand side of our system. We obtain the solution vector and we printed the solution vector, and that's it. Simple as that. The complexity is at the level of a complexity of a MATLAB code. This is a very verbose approach for computing the solution. We can actually compute a solution in a single line of code. Let us explain the second approach. However, let us first comment these lines. We don't need this, we don't need this, and we don't need this. Here's the second approach. Let's see what's happening over here. I can simply type this. Solution vector is equal to my random matrix dot. I specify the name of the solver. Call pivot to household QR. Then I call this function solve and I specify the right hand side. And that's it. After I do that, I print the computed solution. I print the true solution. Then I define the error vector. Here it is. It's basically the solution vector minus true solution. I also define a relative error. Relative error is the two norm of the error divided by the two norm of the true solution. And finally, I print the error vector and I print the relative vector. Let's execute this code and let's see the output. Okay, here it is. This is the computed solution. Perfect. This is the true solution. Hmm. They look almost the same. Here is their error vector. The error vector is within numerical precision. Perfect. Here is the relative error, 10 to the minus 16, and that's precisely the numerical precision. Over here, you can visit this link and you can see other methods for solving systems of linear equations. And here they are. I can simply uncomment these lines and you will see that the solution is almost the same. You have this option, then you also have an option to directly invert the matrix, that is, to invert the random matrix. However, this is not an advisable option. Then also you have this option. So let's see the other options by following this link. Over here I will go to my brave 
browser and let's see what's happening over here. Here you can read more about available solars. Here they are. They differ in speed and accuracy. Okay, that would be all for today. I hope that you like this video. If you like the videos I create, please press the like and subscribe buttons. Thanks a lot and have a nice day.